All right, Foot Clan, week one is upon us. We've got tons of news to talk about. We have some smoke fire on today's show, and we make our Super Bowl picks, so make sure you subscribe, like the video, leave a comment, and enjoy. Hungering for something new this summer? HelloFresh has got your back with pre-measured ingredients and easy-to-follow directions. Your new favorite meal can be prepared in under 30 minutes. Get up to 14 free meals, including free shipping, when you use code FOOTBALLERS14 at HelloFresh.com slash FOOTBALLERS14. And Foot Clan, today's podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Is there something interfering with your happiness, your day-to-day life, preventing you from achieving your goals? Um, I can speak from my experience. Over the last couple of years, there have been a lot of uh, ups and downs with things that I can't control in the world. And what BetterHelp does is it helps you assess your needs, and it matches you with a licensed professional therapist. You can start communicating with one in 48 hours, and this is professional counseling securely done online. This is not a crisis line. It's not self-help. This is a professional counselor. Uh, They're committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches. They make it easy and free to change counselors if you're not happy. So visit betterhelp.com slash footballers. That's better H-E-L-P. And join the over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they are recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. Fantasy Footballers listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash footballers. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your host, Andy Holloway. Jason Moore and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Tuesday, September 7th. Two sleeps till football. You're not wrong, Mr. The, Moore. Is that some Beastie Boys over there? <laughs> That's exactly what was in my head. Thank you, Mike. Two sleeps till. Burn out. Burn, burn. Football. <laughs> well, we're back. Long weekend. Enjoyed it. Needed it. 17 weeks of football on the way. Oh, yes. 18. Yeah, I was going to correct him. Thank yeah. you, Mike. 18. Sorry. 17 games, 18 weeks. A whole lot of fantasy football fun. We are, we welcome you back in. Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Thank you for supporting the show. Follow us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Leave us a review if you feel so inclined. Yeah. And, and you like us. Yeah. If you're kind of, you know, out on us, just skip the review. Yeah, look, pick a side, people. If you're coming in with this three-star review... I mean, reassess your life. If you want to hit us with a one star, I understand. <laughs> Andy's not the best. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, not quite the direction I was heading. Uh, Brooks is here. Al Borland as well. YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballers if you want to watch the show. Jam packed show. Lots of news to talk about as we prepare for week one. Everything on our website is getting switched over to week one today. So you'll see that taking place. Have enjoyed all of the uh, draft analyzer results that we've been seeing over on Twitter. Tons of drafts this past weekend, including yesterday on Labor Day. And um, I've seen uh, a ton of great results. One terrible one. You know who you are. Mm. Terrible draft. Terrible draft. So, uh, but I wanted to open things up with Super Bowl picks as we head into week one. Before we get into where there's smoke, there's fire. Uh, Thought about this a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Last year, I did get both of these right. So I've just got to go back to back here. Mm -hmm. And I've seen the future. You guys know I can do that when I want to. Except with regards to Philadelphia. But yes, Yes, every every other future. That was when I was uh, like a first year student, like like at Hogwarts or something. I was still learning my my magic. Yeah, you, you overextended. Last year, obviously... It came true, therefore. Let's hear uh, it. Who you got? I got the Rams against the Ravens in the Super Bowl. 
I've got the Rams, Matthew Stafford, Sean McVay and company coming out of the NFC. The defense is outstanding. This is, of course, very painful being a Cardinal fan in the just horribly difficult NFC West. So I go. I'm going to go Rams out out of the uh, out of the NFC, and then the Ravens. I think they get over the hump this year, and they get a big playoff win. Defense is strong, Lamar and company. So I, I have the Ravens winning the Super Bowl, defeating the Rams. Sean McVay, no matter what quarterback he puts into the Super Bowl, ends mm. up on the losing side. Oh. So Ravens, but, Rams, the top uh, teams from the two toughest divisions. Yeah, that is definitely true. They, I mean, the, it is not fair to be in one of those two no, divisions. Um, and you are half right, Andy. Uh, your half is the Rams side. I have the Rams as well getting out of the NFC. Um, in the AFC, I went with the Bills. Uh, I think that over the last several years, every single year you have seen this step forward, not just from Josh Allen, but from the team as a whole, getting more experience, getting – more playoff tested. And I think this is the year that they take that leap to the number one team. I mean, it's going to be hard with teams like, you know, the, your guys' AFC picks here. But I do think that the Bills are ready to get all the way there and lose in the Super Bowl to Matthew Stafford. So you got the Rams oh. winning the it all. Rams. I do. All right, let's get the chalk out of the way. I, I just don't see a way that it's not Kansas City from the AFC. I was – I tried to convince myself of a story of some other team is going to beat them out. Like we couldn't, we couldn't could be Bills Buffalo. And... You know, like no, I just I don't believe it. They've rebuilt the offensive line, and the team is going to be there is too good. There is that like revenge narrative going around about the undefeated season for the Chiefs. Like they won it, they're coming off of the Super Bowl loss. Um, they want to reestablish dominance. So I could, I mean. How can, I, I you not, it, how can you not see that? I yeah. found it hard to not take both the Chiefs and the Bucs. Yeah, I understand because it's that. Like the paths are there for them. Uh, who you got in the NFC? And I'm going with Aaron Rodgers riding out uh, his train of glory in Green Bay, making it to the Super Bowl. Uh, I don't have him winning the Super okay. Bowl, <laughs> uh, but he'll get there. They will lose, and they'll uh, everyone will point fingers at each other, and then Aaron Rodgers will go to a different team. Why would he? Oh, they lost because yes. they lose the Super yes. Bowl. Okay. Oh, he'll go out either way. He'll either yes. win, and he'll we know which finger he'll put that that <laughs> ring on. <Am> <laughs> he'll <laughs> he'll show them that ring and say peace out. Am I the only one that thinks Aaron Rodgers is most definitely staying? Yes. For more than this year, Al, what do you think over there, Packer fan? Yeah, I think he's leaving. Oh, you think he's gone? Yep. Wow. Well, They'll trade him this off season. I I do not see that. I. Uh, I hope you're right. A lot of smoke. I'm not sure the fire ends up. It's yeah, I, I, it's not a certainty. I'll say that, but uh, all yeah, right. Certainly, the stars are aligning that way. So, in summary, Ravens, Rams, Chiefs. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. I wonder if uh, our producers have a Super Bowl pick for us today. And uh, so I'll throw to Al. Al, do you have the Packers winning the Super Bowl this year? Packers versus of course. The Packers. Yeah, Mike had it half right. So okay. Congrats. So you've got Packers and Al. Um, <laughs> Or I'm sorry, Judge Giamatti. Do you have the Cowboys winning it all this year? Definitely not. Okay. Who do you, do you have a Super Bowl winning squad selected? Going a real exciting year. Going Chiefs, Buccaneers. Okay. Oh, I there it. it is. I do, get do the Bucks it. win it again? The Chiefs this time. Okay. So would we we get a one to one? How's that uh, cotton mouth choking down all that chalk? It's disgusting. Okay. You set that up all right. <laughs> Moving on. Where there's smoke, there's fire. Presented by Traeger Grills. I thought you just meant the cotton mouth of me throwing to him at all for an answer on the show live. Oh, no, no. I was talking to... I mean, I uh, threw to Al first on purpose to give Brooks processing time. Mm -hmm. I actually really appreciate that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, we all knew... We, we knew that Al was prepared with Packers. Yes. Yeah. All right. Where there's smoke, there's fire couple of storylines we'll talk about the first one a report out of Miami the Dolphins coach Brian Flores suggested Miles Gaskin has become the player uh, the team can trust to be on the field for all three downs a quote from him he made pass protection a part of his game and he's not a guy that we have to take out in those situations uh, I am 
all in on Miles Gaskin. I have him. I think I've drafted him in every draft I've had over the last week because I like the value. I've tried to trade for him in the leagues I don't have him in. So I am a believer. Uh, it was a slow process this offseason. And I know you're not as uh, bullish, Jason, but I think it's fire, obviously, based on the investments that I'm making in him in fantasy. So 18 touches a game last year. Where are you with the smoke fire of this report, specifically the confidence of the team to, to kind of make him a workhorse? Um, well, I, so if that's what this report is, is is making him a workhorse, I, I do still think it's more smoke than fire. Uh, watching kind of the interview that, that all of this came out of, um, there was talk about, uh, you know, Gaskin – uh, being able to be a better pass protector, which which is important. That that's why they brought in Malcolm Brown, right? He's one of the better pass uh, protecting running backs out there. And so if Gaskin can do that, that's great. I I still have a hard time believe you know all the time. Coaches will talk their players up. Oh, he's great. We don't have to take him off the field. Um, yada yada. But whether or not he can withstand a workhorse role uh, at two hundred pounds, like for instance, uh, you know uh, Austin Eckler. Um, is the greatest comp same height same weight um, pass catching uh, duties and and I love Austin Eckler and and he's not a workhorse back they're going to have other you know he, he he's not going to carry the ball 250 plus times and I don't think Gaskin is either it's a matter of whether he can stay as efficient as he was last year in the pass catching game I still think that there will be all three running backs involved in the backfield um and I worry about the offensive line, but um, it's certainly trending up for Miles Gaskin right now after how it started in the preseason. I I do think this is smoky. Where do you land, Mike? The, the comment is, you know, I mean, uh, you could take it however you want to. Like this can be a confirmation bias if you're in on Miles Gaskin, but he's just saying he's he's not a guy we have to take out. But they're going to like they're they're going to make choices to take Miles Gaskin out, give him a break, put. Uh, put Malcolm Brown in. They still like Ahmed over there in Miami. Uh, it's just so the question becomes: How often do those other running backs get in? Uh, I've I've kind of landed, you know, where I was, which was in the middle of I. Th I think that Miles Gaskin at his ADP was a fine risk reward pick uh, with with some real upside there. That if he gets that same role and the the team is solid, then he's he's going to be a three down running back that by the end will finish as a top 15 guy. So I would say this is, uh, if I have to pick, I guess it's more fire than smoke. What I like about Gaskin with the Eckler comp is like we have a best ball we're, we're drafting right now. Eckler is, was the 112. Gaskin was the 47. Right. And so, and I think that both of those players can have very similar years. Gaskin needs more shirtless workout videos. I yeah, I'm not, I'm not have, confident that Gaskin um, is as shredded as Eckler right now because I haven't seen it. <laughs> when I think about Austin Eckler, I know he's he's small in NFL terms, but uh, he's a sturdy dude. I like I loved your comment because because when you get the videos, it's like everyone freaks out as though if you don't see it, these players are not in shape. That's right. But I if have you no, see the quad, no. oh quadricep <laughs> muscles for the running back. I have I have no uh, proof of apps. I I, I have you need not, a proof of apps. Yeah, I need today's proof. paper right <laughs> in the photograph with proof of abs. <laughs> I, but you're the, yeah, okay. Gaskin is the same size as Eckler. I don't view them as the same size. I think in my head, Gaskin is like thirty pounds lighter than Austin Eckler. Is, is Eckler getting a three round ab bump? At least two. Maybe. I, mean, I think one, one round's got to be Justin Herbert. 18 touches a game. That's what I want from, yes. from Miles to continue, and that will be enough. Uh, okay, so we've got a couple fires, one smoke, another report, and another one that I will go fire on. The Athletics, Zach Kiefer reporting Colts coaches want Naeem Hines to have more touches in 2021. Naeem Hines is a good football player that when you listen to Frank Reich talk about the team and his role, what is communicated to me is a tremendous amount of trust. And I think that Naeem Hines is probably, he may be the most annoying player in fantasy to know when to start or when to sit, but he will get a lot of work this year. 
Um, 10 opportunities a game last year. I don't know. I, I think that they, I think he'll be above that. This is one of those situations that happens every single year in fantasy where there is a stud who is an awesome option for fantasy that we want and believe should get the entirety of the workload. And that is irrelevant. It, it, there are, these are coaches. Are you talking that, about Jonathan Taylor? Yeah, I'm saying Jonathan Taylor, the, the fantasy community wants him to have 100% workload and 100% snap share, and that, that doesn't matter. It matters what the actual NFL coaches want. Last year, they gave Hines a lot of work, and it wasn't like Jonathan Taylor wasn't great last year. Do you remember the if, fantasy finish for Hines? If they're coming out, uh, yeah, he was a top 24 back. Like 20. Um, if they're coming out this year and saying, I want to get him more involved, I don't know how you could – like like – there's there's one side that's just fluff, right? There's there's a side that's like um, talking up a player for no reason. But this is a we've seen it on the field. We saw them utilize him in those situations. He did great with it, and they're saying they want to keep doing that. That that's it's just a nice consistent fire from last year. And they he is officially the number two running back on the depth chart. I know Twitter was uh, kind of making a making some ruckus this morning over that situation happening. T.Y. Hilton will be missing at least a handful of games and as much as I like Michael Pittman. Other guys have to catch the ball, and Naheem Hines, is that's his specialty. And so I, I would say that this one is fire as well, that Hines, if you if you were grabbing Hines, you know, at that later round ADP, I think he's going to be a spot starter for you. Yeah, it was still difficult. I mean, he – Ping pong between, I mean, the week one and two. Yeah, is the, I had him last year. It was the perfect example. I mean, you, you number five running back in week one, everyone freaking out. Then he goes 82, 30, 43, 45, 33. And then he gets a string of five games where it's like, you know, 7, 44, 3, 37, 16, 21. So difficult to start, mm -hmm. but exists to take away your dreams for Jonathan Taylor. That's for sure. All right, that was where there's smoke, there's fire. Now he minds the dream stealer. Yeah, it's uh, him and J.D. McKissick go. They, they run through the meadows. I Wait. stole another dream today. <laughs> what did you do? I stole a dream. Oh, thank you. Who were we calling goblins? Uh, was there that? was Chris Goblin. Well, no, no, no. We were talking the about the, these backup running backs. Going, <laughs> yeah, no, that's a hundred percent what they do. I stole your dream. Yeah, they stole the dreams. <laughs> I mean, that was super creepy. I would not watch that movie starring Naeem Hines and J.D. McKissick. <laughs> but, that, I mean, they, that's what they're there for. Oh, and don't, don't – I mean, James White's there too, just for the record. Oh, me? <laughs> He's there to take some Damian Harris dreams away. Um, oh, man. No, A.J. Dillon is not, not there. Sorry. He can't fit in that door. He's no, way too large. He's the opposite of a guy. He's more of a troll. <laughs> <laughs> not a goblin um all right that was where there's smoke there's fire presented by traeger grills put a traeger wood pellet grill in your starting lineup and make every game day more delicious head to traeger.com slash footballers to discover just how simple wood fired cooking can be news and notes from around the league presented by sleeper I mean, they're not really just target goblins. They're more like snap goblins, right? Yeah, goblin they're out there. They're taking up. They're just taking up snaps that you wish your other player had. Like Jonathan Taylor can catch the ball. Antonio Gibson can catch the ball. Mm -hmm. Both of them are pretty, pretty darn good at it. Mm -hmm. But then the snap goblins come running off the sideline. <laughs> Get out of there! It's my turn. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, JD. I think based on this voice, I'm realizing this isn't a coach decision. Right. I think they just run on the field. They choose themselves. They're like, <laughs> you're out, Jonathan. Goodness. Oh, it's nice that the season is here. Let's get into a lot of news. Talk about how it impacts your fantasy team. Mark Andrews, four-year, $56 million contract. Oh, probably gave Jason a pep, alert. a pep in his step after uh, trading for Mark Andrews in our dynasty league. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I don't. Money, 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 money. 
I don't know that it changes much of anything. We all assumed that he would get a contract extension and that when it happens, he would be one of the highest paid tight ends in the league. Good for you, Mark. Yep, um, congratulations. But obviously, they're not they're not doing that if he's looking fat and terrible at camp, you know? <laughs> so, good. Yeah, uh, fat and terrible is one of the worst ways you can look at camp. Also, this way is not great either. Justice Hill, mm. torn Achilles at practice. Raven, he's the was the third string running back for the Baltimore Ravens heading into the season. Yeah, he was probably going to split time with Tyson Williams. Now, Tyson Williams is an interesting potential flyer. But, but Andy, yeah. oh. they're bringing in Left Bell to practice to try out yeah. Devonta Freeman. Yeah, I mean, I think they'll probably sign one of those guys too. They will have to just as an insurance running back. But Gus Edwards, this is his backfield. Um. Uh, Devonta Freeman is on a mission to be released by every NFL club, which he's getting close to. So, yeah, they have to bring somebody in. I mean, two devastating injuries. You talk about a season ender for J.K. Dobbins, a season ender for mm -hmm. Justice Hill. And so, I, you know, I haven't seen a lot of Tyson Williams. But th this gives me more faith that you should pick him up because yeah. where you know we, we had talked about Williams that the all news out of camp sounded like he had – secured being the backup role and kind of becoming the you know for lack of better phrasing the new Gus Edwards in that in that Raven system where he's going to get carries because they the Ravens simply have not full-time featured a running back they they split up the work Williams is going to be that backup guy but you didn't know how often is Justice Hill going to get on the field he he's been on the team a while he knows the system he's a solid pass catching running back but if the third option is now these other running backs who can't get on an NFL team because they're washed, <laughs> then like Gus Edwards and Williams, those are going to be the guys. They, they are. And uh, for those that don't know, Tyson Williams was an undrafted player out of BYU. I've heard the, uh, hey, there may not be a James Robinson this year, but he's one of the candidates of potentially having a bigger impact than we think. This team, I mean, think about how you viewed Gus. Yeah, exactly. When J.K. Dobbins was the starter. You viewed Gus as like, hey, look, if this team has a big lead at the end of the games, you may be seeing a lot of Tyson Williams in the fourth quarter running out the clock instead of, you know, risking losing Gus because this team's Super Bowl chances, they take a huge hit without Gus. Yeah, and, and nothing against Gus Edwards. He's looked great when he's been on the field. But if Gus was running behind the Arizona offensive line, I, I don't think we'd be as excited when you watch Gus Edwards dominate back there, it's in part because the running lanes that open up for that system with Lamar Jackson, they're going to open up for whoever is there. And Tyson Williams should be uh, certainly rostered in a dynasty format. I think he should be r rostered in redraft. And, you know, in week one, the Baltimore Ravens play the Las Vegas Raiders. Raiders. Uh, so it, Williams – he should be picked up because he's going to be a, a waiver one or a, a week one waiver guy. Get ahead of the crowd. He's a perfect name of if you've got someone that is missing week one and you will need to throw him on your IR and pick someone up, grab him. And before we get into some more of this news, Foot Clan, now is the time to celebrate. The first NFL Sunday of the season is about to kick off and DraftKings, the official daily fantasy partner of the NFL, is putting you in in the center of this weekend's action. New customers can get a free shot at a $1 million top prize with their first deposit by signing up using the code BALLERS. It's simple. You just pick your lineup, you stay under the salary cap, and you see how your team stacks up against the competition. Feel the NFL action like never before with a free shot at a $1 million payday. Download the DraftKings app now and use code BALLERS. This week, new customers can get a free shot at the $1 million top prize and compete for millions of prizes across all contests. Enter code BALLERS to get a free shot at that $1 million, the $1 million top prize with your first deposit. That's code BALLERS only at DraftKings, the official daily fantasy partner of the NFL. Minimum $5 deposit required. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details. And Foot Clan, if you are a wine drinker like myself, come along on the ride with First Leaf with me because First Leaf is a better way to uh, get your wine instead of standing in a grocery store aisle acting like you know these different wines, hoping that your grocery, your local grocery stores just, oh, they've, 
they pick the choicest wines. Um, instead of that, <laughs> why don't you go with First Leaf, who actually is a fully customizable wine club who knows what they're doing. This is all they do. They're going to send you curated boxes of wine that are perfect for you. Uh, they have more award-winning wine than anyone else. These bottles come, and they are fantastic. You rate them. You uh, customize them. You'll, you'll, you'll take a sign-up quiz when you first get started telling them what kind of wines do you like, sweet, dry, red, white, and then it customizes it to you, and it finds the best wines available and passes the savings on up to 60% off retail I love it. This is how I get my wine. And you could save time. You could save money and stress with First Leaf, the wine club designed for you in mind. Join today, and you'll get six bottles of wine for $29.95 and free shipping. Just go to tryfirstleaf.com slash footballers. That's six bottles of wine for $29.95 and free shipping at tryfirstleaf.com slash footballers. All right, some injury updates. Clyde Edwards-Alaire and Daryl Williams, both going to be ready for week one for the Chiefs. Saquon is, quote, gearing up to play week one against the Broncos, is very close to being cleared. Takes him a long time to lace those cleats. I, but we, I think we brought it up on they the go show up to already. His thighs. Oh, they're super. <laughs> the cleats. Are they leg casts? <laughs> uh, we would play him if he's starting, right? Yes. I, I think you have to. Both of these guys, Clyde Edwards Alaire and, and Barkley, you drafted them so high. They're in your starting lineup, and, and even though I don't think we necessarily expect, especially for Saquon, who's missed you know the entirety of uh, since his last injury, um, I don't think we expect a monstrous game. You, you pretty much have to plug him in your lineup. Let me uh, <clears throat> throw another player in there for some advice for week one starters. Would you play Odell against Kansas City in week one? Oh, my goodness. Because you don't have as high of a draft investment on Odell, but... At the same time, he's supposed to be healthy. I asking for a friend. Um, uh, he is someone that I think you can pivot off of. He's obviously recovering from the knee injury, and I, I would like to see how he looks in Week One. If you have another option, so what about instance, a AJ Green? Oh my gosh, you're literally naming <laughs> players that I just can't stand. Um, no, but if you had like Robbie Anderson, yeah, or Odell Beckham, I would I would certainly what about throw Lavisca Chenault. I would go Chenault. Okay, Marquez Callaway probably Marquez. Okay. So what a world. So you yeah. are uh waiting to see. Yeah, I think there's what OBJ more has. There's more options at wide receiver to to take that that's approach. Fair. I think that's that's fair. I'm going to make that I mean my friend's going to make those changes. Uh Evan Ingram has a uh, he's a long shot to play in the season opener. He's he's not going to play, but he has been doing work off the side of the field, so yeah. There was concern that he was going to get put on the short-term IR but I would expect him to be back to the Giants sooner than later. DeAndre Swift ready for week one against the 49ers, according to head coach Dan Campbell. The discount that people have been getting on DeAndre Swift over the last three or four days. This one is... Is significant. This one is tough. I mean, it's it's clearly been a, a pretty nasty groin injury, uh, groinindex.com, <laughs> uh, for DeAndre Swift to have missed this much time, and it's week one. How... Much work is Swift going to get versus Jamal Williams? How much work uh, when they're both healthy? What does that timeshare actually look like when Jamal Williams was the free agent that they, they brought in and the way that Dan Campbell has talked about this backfield? So, yeah, he, Swift was it was probably a draft day discount if uh, you you completely are bought in on the talent. But that's what the problem all offseason has been for me with DeAndre Swift is it is 100% talent. You're buying in on talent only. And that can absolutely work, but the situation is going to try and drag him down into the muck. Yeah, he's one where you certainly got a discount if he's healthy, without a shred of right. doubt. A great pick in fantasy if he's healthy is scary because when you have an entire offseason program missed, you just can't be sure. And when that news came out this morning that Dan Campbell said – He's ready to go week one. He's going to be playing. When that, when I before I read the headline, I just saw the picture of Swift. I was like, oh no, what is this? Like, oh, he's not ready because we we just haven't had that information. I would say this: it's not a good week one matchup, and I think that he will yeah, get against the forty nine against the forty nine ers, and I think he will get less work than you know what if he was just healthy this whole camp process. Players that I would play ahead of him would be like Raheem Mostert. 
uh, Miles Sanders against Atlanta, Gus Edwards against the Raiders. If those are your decisions, then I think you you might have the luxury to to wait and see. Um, but he's also a good pass catcher and he's a talented player. Right. So top ten run defense from San Francisco last year, even with the injuries. So yeah, good analysis. Noah Fant returned to practice on Monday. Uh, that's good. I can tell you as someone who needs to play him in week one, I was happy to see it uh, because I was clicking through uh, dynasty options like Jordan Akins and Dan Arnold, and I wanted to play Noah Fant, and well, now I think I will. Yeah, for redraft, it's been so difficult to decide what to do. I mean, you drafted Noah Fant to play him, and it would be a scary proposition, but are you confident? Like, let's say Gronk is on the waiver wire, Andy. Um, and you're going week one, would you just hold Fant because yes. your draft capital and play him week one? Or Yeah, I'm a little worried about Fant week one, whether or not, even if he's active, just because Albert O is going to be available and a contributor, they may share some time. So, I, I so do would you be willing to drop Fant for Gronk on the waivers? Uh, no, I don't think so. I guess in that situation, if you're worried about losing a season-long tight end for you, then you just play him, and even if it's a point or two difference. Uh, Hunter Henry says he ex he's expecting to play in week one as well. Sonny Michelle on track to play for the Rams in week one against the Bears. Um, Jamison Crowder might play, might get cleared from the COVID list. He might? Yep. Oh, uh, this is interesting news. Um for from a standpoint of if Crowder is out, I think Elijah Moore then goes right into starting as the, the, the slot wide receiver for the Jets, which that could be a problem for Jamison Crowder if if Elijah Moore is able to get out there and, and showcase his talent sooner than later. Dak, full go whew, whew. for Thursday's week one opener, which is what we oh. want to see. We want to see Brady Dak on Thursday night. However, Mm -hmm. Zach Martin is is not going to play on Thursday night. He's on the COVID list. That's the Cowboys offensive lineman, Zach Martin. Tampa Bay was the number one run defense in the NFL last year, so maybe temper your Zeke yeah. expectations. Yeah, they're, they're Zeke. Oh, I like that. Zeke. It's it's not good. No, Don't I, repeat it. I, well, I said <laughs> I like it, it and then I, I started to try to say it. And I didn't like it. Zeke Peck Stations. Whoa, that's not what so I said. You, you liked it. I liked it. But then you let it process, and yeah. now you're now you don't like it. Yeah, it it, it certainly the numbers no, sir. weren't going down. I don't it really like it. wasn't supposed to be talked about ever again. <laughs> but but um, <laughs> he is. I, I was I was going to bring this up. Um, and and now I am. Um, <laughs> he is a trade for candidate after week one. Absolutely, Zeke? Zeke. Because I think some people maybe don't remember how dominant. Tampa Bay's defense was against the run last year. If you lose a, an all-world guard and then you go up against that matchup, it, it's possible that he looks really bad this week. And if he does, I think there are plenty of leagues where Zeke dropped to someone. You know, some some leagues, someone is calling their shot on grabbing Zeke, uh, but there were concerns of is is this the beginning of the end for, for Zeke? He's, you know, on his second contract, and if he comes out and looks like a turd in week one, I think you're going to have some managers that are really scared of, oh, no, is is he not what I thought he was? And that's when I would scoop up. Tampa Bay gave up the fewest rushing yards, the fewest rushing touchdowns, and the lowest yards per carry in the NFL last year. So. Well, at least they returned all their all their starters. Yeah, I, I mean, the, the other side of the coin is, is if Zeke comes out and gives you a good game against Tampa, watch out. Because, I mean, that's certainly possible. It's not like they don't give up anything. So, um it's going to be a fun Thursday night game. Tyrod Taylor, the official starter for the Texans. Goodness gracious. Which means that Deshaun Watson will sit and watch. Yeah. Maybe from home on Sundays. Doesn't this just mean that in a couple weeks, whoever the starting quarterback is for the Texans is going to be awesome? Because, I mean, you had Baker Baker come in after a couple weeks well, of, good luck of Tyrod. Situation. Exactly. Then you had Justin Herbert come in. I mean, when, when Tyrod starts and then leaves – if there's a rookie behind him, whew. is he just walking around protecting his lungs right now? Isn't that what happened last year? Yes. Oh yeah, he gosh. got the the rib shot in it. Oh man, punctured his lung. I I guess I'm happy for Tyrod that he gets the opportunity because yes. he's had a few taken away from him due to injury. And he seems like a 
like a he's a great genuinely dude. great dude. Uh, but Davis in Mills. the worst possible situation ever. Yeah. Duke Johnson was signed by Jacksonville to the practice squad. Okay. Um, I don't know if there's anything else significant to talk about. Is there anything that's happened this morning, Brooksy, that we need to discuss? Nothing yet. Okay. All right. Saint, Saints kicker Will Lutz is on injured reserve. Don't care. So Ald <laughs> Aldrich Rosa. Uh, oh, stop talking about it. We'll be there. We'll be there, kicker. <laughs> really oh. turned on the kicker position. <laughs> Yeah. Well, no, we turned off the kicker position. Yes, we did. Oh. Yeah. Which was awesome because <laughs> we added a flex, got rid of kickers. Uh, it's a lot more fun. And, you know, there's purists out there that say, you know, well, kicking matters in the NFL. And to that I say, let's change that. <laughs> let's get rid of the field goals. <laughs> let's get rid of the punts <laughs> and the kickoffs. Just play play the game of football. All right. That was today's news and notes presented by Sleeper. They have incredible breaking news alerts. So if you want to be up to date beyond this podcast, up to the minute, you can grab their uh, breaking alerts. Uh, well, you grab the app and you subscribe yep. to the breaking alerts channel and you'll get those alerts faster than anywhere else. Download the Sleeper app today to check that out. I didn't mention that at the top. I really should have. But today's really the last day you can get in the Megalobowl because uh, – this episode is being recorded Tuesday, September 7th. There's drafts through tomorrow Tomorrow, night? Tomorrow, tomorrow night? You okay. can technically still get in tomorrow as well, but drafts tonight, drafts tomorrow. You can get in. Go to megalobowl.com. That's got all the information, the rules, the the sign-up process. Um, we are over 15,000. Oh, brother. Over 15,000. <sighs> if you think you're oh, – me Megalobowl. <laughs> Um, if you think you're the best fantasy football player, uh, come and prove it. And if you win, you're in our listener league next year. And goodness gracious, 15,000 plus. That is, I mean, yeah. And a big trophy. I'm in it. I have, I'll say this. I have not drafted yet. I'm either drafting tonight or tomorrow. So sign up. Maybe you'll be in a league with me and, uh, and I'm going to win. Are we still doing the thing where the winner gets to swim with the sharks then? That's right. That's no, right. no cage though. We can't afford that. Yeah, I mean, no, it, it, and they don't need it. You're they're the, friendly. You're the king of or king or queen of the Megalobowl. Right. right. Sharks fear you. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> Trust, don't worry. You'll be fine. Sharks super fear you because you want a fantasy league. Unrelated, we have another open spot in the listener league. That's right. So Megalobowl.com, basically anybody that supports us on Patreon, uh, jointhefoot.com gets an entry into the Megalobowl. And through the year, you get access to all of our premium tools and resources, an extra episode of the show every week. Um, and that community is now 20,000 strong. Best people in the world. They really are. So into the mailbag we go. Mailbag. Mailbag. All right. Into the mailbag. If you have a question for the show, you can go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Click the submit a question button or dial our voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. Kick it off with a voicemail. Hey, ballers. I'll keep it short and sweet. Do I start Cooper Cup or Chase Claypool for week one for my flex? Thanks, guys. Bye. Cooper Cup, Los Angeles Rams, will be playing against the Chicago Bears. Mm -hmm. And uh, Chase Claypool is at Buffalo. So I, w I, I view these matchups pretty similar. It's Cup. Yes. <laughs> good good analysis. <laughs> I, I, I do agree. Yeah. I'm going to let you finish, Jason. I'm going to let you finish. But it's Cooper Cup. That's right. No, d describe why. Back to you. Well, I mean, it, just even on the draft capital argument, I mean, you invested more on Cooper Cup than you did on Chase Claypool. It'd be nice to see one week of the new Pittsburgh offense and – what the snap counts look like, your your potential for Claypool to not be on the field is so much higher than Cooper Cup. Yes. Um, I don't dislike – I mean, I think Cup's got as good of a matchup, so both on the road. And, and Chase Claypool got banged up in the preseason. Like, Give I, him a it, week. Yeah, that, exactly. If you have Cooper Cup, then, then play him over Chase Claypool. I'm not – don't hear what I'm not saying. I'm not overly concerned about Claypool week one, but this is – if you're looking for a – a way to decide on a razor thin margin, go with the player who's healthy. Yeah, and and the the Rams are also at home. Yeah, that too. Oh, okay. I shouldn't have writ, wrote at Bears down on my little sheet here. Uh, let's go to YouTube. Christopholis says, "Hey ballers, I'm in a league for the first time. 
with Fab this okay. year. Okay. Can you share any tips and tricks on how you approach waivers in this format over the course of the year? For those unaware, Fab is uh, the free agent acquisition budget. It is a set amount of dollars. I actually just had a question about this on Twitter too, so it's always good talking about it. Virtual can, fake dollars. Yeah, so you can you can uh, essentially switch your league to it now if you want to before the season gets started. It is a different way to approach waivers. A lot of leagues use waiver priority, which is basically um, after the week one, the worst team ends up with number one waiver priority. They can hold that or they can use it. And we don't really like that in part because of week one where that's not really a uh, an indicator of your season-long power rankings for a team. And yet in week one, some team that finishes last gets first priority. Free Fab is a way to kind of equalize that and add another element of strategy where you get a set amount of uh, virtual dollars. Maybe it's $100 over the course of the whole year. And the day after the game's finished, people put in their bids on players and it's blind bidding. And so, you know, Mike and I, maybe uh, maybe Tyson Williams is out there. He has a nice week one. And Mike and I both want him. Mike may put a blind bid of $10 of his fab and I might put 15 and so I overpay by $4, I guess, than what I needed to get him, but I would get him when waivers run the next morning. And uh, So what are some strategies people should use with that? So our strategy that we like to give out, if it's the league's first time in it, people are going to be nervous, and they're not going to know when to go uh, go hard in the paint after trying to get one of these free agents on their on their squad. So week one, don't be afraid to go after somebody. And when we're doing our waiver shows – you know, next Tuesday, we'll be talking about what percentage of the fab we're willing to risk to try and go after these these potential waiver wire studs. So that's it. Be ready to to go after a player in week one and, and make sure you're, at, by the end of the season, save at least a little bit. Uh, not It doesn't have to be a ton. Like five, but, save five bucks for the playoffs. Yes. So that when you are, because a lot of people will be out, um, and you'll only be able to do out of, out of your your budget, and you'll only be able to do zero dollar bids. And when there's that great um, defense uh, that you want to either keep your opponent from getting in that matchup, or or you want you know you'll have you can put that one dollar bid in and guarantee you get them if if your opponent is down at zero. Yeah, it's it's equally uh, offensive and defensive by the end of the season when you have that when you can take a, a player or a defense away for just a, a one one dollar bid and if you want to conserve fab over the back half of the year i i always tell people pick up that defense a week early look at the matchups ahead of time because then you won't have to spend fab even if it's a dollar or two dollars a week that's a lot to conserve mm -hmm. for the it, sake of the end of the year absolutely e even right now um you know we'll be talking about undrafted gyms uh on tomorrow's episode defenses will be in that like the browns um, you know, we we could talk about that a little bit. Yeah, because they play Kansas City in Week One, so nobody drafted exactly them. nobody's drafted them. But uh, Week Two looking pretty nice. All probably right. coming off a loss. Probably. Here we go. Voicemail. Hey ballers, do you have a general preference as to whether you like to start running backs or wide receivers more at flex? Thanks. Love the show. Do you have a preference? I mean, does it depend if it's half or full or? Yeah, I mean the scoring format will will make a, a difference. Obviously, in full PPR, wide receivers will catch more passes, and and the baseline is higher. The way that I look at it is this: usually the top, the top running backs will outscore the top wide receivers. Um, the next tier of just really solid wide receivers versus really solid running backs are about even. But that's usually when you're in your starting positions. You know, you got two running backs and two or three wide receivers. Then once that pool is dried up and you're looking at the flex option, in a full PPR league, it will usually be I, pre I prefer to start a wide receiver. They'll score more points than the running back on average in that range. Um, but running backs are a little bit more consistent in known volume. Like you, It's easier to know a running back is going to touch the ball 12 or 13 or 14 times versus knowing on, on a flex uh, you know, range wide receiver whether they'll get the targets. So volatility of the rest of your roster could have an impact on what you play there. Yes. If you need more high end, you know, production versus, like you said, guaranteed volume from the position. All right, uh, you like that? Writes in from YouTube and says, "Are we going to have the start start 'em sit 'em tool on the website this year? 
You betcha. It'll be up there today. You betcha. It'll be up there today. I, the whole transition, if you heard at the beginning of the show, the week one website changeover is happening today on Tuesday. It will probably take the most majority of the day to happen. But our like our week one rankings are going to be up there today. And everything is – we're turning the page into week one. Yeah, so. I mean, all of the, the strength of schedule, the flex rankings, the – uh, the snapshot tool, everything uh, will be available by the end of today for week one. Um, whether you're, uh, you know, if you're a supporter at Join the Foot and you have access to all the premium projections, all the free uh, projections uh, on the on the rankings by the end of today. All right, last one, Dan in Missouri. How do you guys feel about trades in a redraft league before the season even starts? I love it. If uh, I'm I'm a big fan of. Uh, if I can do a two for one and grab, usually right now there are go get my about, Gaskin. There's there's about twenty players on the waiver wire that um I usually like before week one. That oh man, I just you know these undrafted gems. And if you can do a two for one, improve your starting lineup, and then grab one of those guys off the waivers, I'm thrilled to do that. All righty, well that'll do it for today's episode of the show. Uh, we want to close out by thanking Traeger Grills for supporting the podcast. A reminder. I mean, look, the season is here. You don't need a reminder that the season is here. No, you what don't. What you need a reminder about is the fact that Traeger can make game day exquisite. Unless you've had meat off of Traeger and then you don't need a reminder. It's no, just you it's know. It's built into your calendar for your family. You just put it in there. I did a little Labor Day BBQ yeah. on the Traeger last night. Okay. How'd that turn out? Uh, delicious. <laughs> What'd you do? Burgers? You know it. You do burgers a lot. Yeah, because they're the best. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't blame you. Uh, and the weather's starting to get a little... It's going to get better here, too. We'll yes. be able to go outside more. Wi-Fi technology. That's what lets you watch the game and then keep track of your cooks and uh, makes it super easy. Grill, smoke, bake, roast, braise. Check them out. Traeger.com slash footballers. I've been getting tagged on um, pictures of... Uh, giant Traeger grills in mm -hmm. boxes mm -hmm. where people have made the decision. One guy said advertising doesn't work on me and then sent me a picture of the Traeger on the box. So Traeger.com slash footballers uh, if you want to check out a Traeger grill. Like they're not only a sponsor, they're our friends and we love and, Traeger. And I'm a member. <laughs> All right, that'll do it for today's show. But there's another one tomorrow. See you then. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. In Foot Clan, we want to thank pristineauction.com. A Robert Wood signed jersey yesterday, $57. It Ooh. ends tonight. Christian McCaffrey signed jersey, 61 bucks right now. Cool. Christian That's McCaffrey. It's a good deal. That's a good deal. Use the code BALLERS at pristineauction.com and you'll save $10.